welcome to the On The Air podcast, a companion to On The Air magazine, a bi-monthly magazine from ARRL for beginner to intermediate ham radio licensees. The On The Air podcast extends material found in On The Air magazine to help you engage with the ham radio hobby and service more fully. The On The Air podcast is sponsored by ICOM for the love of ham radio. So I have here the July-August 2024 issue, which features um, a representation of the wonder of Morse code on the cover. We've got uh, a few articles in this issue about how to um, learn Morse code, how to practice it, um, so that you increasingly up your skills. And there is an article in here all about the um, things that W1AW, ARL's Hiram Percy Maxim Memorial Station offers. We have some resources um, at W1AW to help you learn and practice Morse code to help your proficiency. So here we are today in W1AW, and of course we have here Joe Karsha, the W1AW station manager, Joe Karsha, NJ1Q, who's going to tell me a little more about what you guys offer here. Okay, awesome. Well, thank yeah. you very much for this opportunity to showcase what we do here at W1AW, as well as talk a little bit about Morse code. Now, while you may not be able to hear it, right now we are actually in the midst of our morning code practice. Today we are sending what is considered a slow, which means we start off at five words a minute, and we go up to 15. That allows individuals who are beginning to learn Morse code, they already have the tools, they already have the letters and numbers and pro signs, and now this is where they begin to practice yeah. to better yeah. get to know Morse code and, and improve their proficiency. So this is daily, right? This is daily, correct. So this comes across daily at slow speed and fast speed? Correct, we have an alternating schedule. Mm -hmm. This way we have fairly constant coverage of the speeds mm -hmm. because we will have individuals who are beginners. Mm -hmm. They're gonna to wanna to start off at five words a minute. Yeah. And we yeah. also have those individuals that may already have the five, 10, or even 15 and want to start off at say maybe 25. Mm -hmm. So to cover all sides, we have a combination of what we call slow and fast. We will send slow 5 to 15, and then say the next transmitted schedule will have it at 35 to 10. So no matter where you are in building your skills, there is a daily code practice session that you fit into. Correct, and since they alternate at each day and each time, it's not as if you have to say, well, I gotta wait till Thursday mm -hmm. to listen to something. Throughout the course of the day, we do the fast and the slow speeds. That's great. And uh, you can find the schedule for that in a couple of places, right? It's on the ARL website. Yes. And I believe it's also in every issue of QST. It is in every issue of yeah. QST. It is on our webpage. Um, you know, one of the reasons it appears in the magazine is because our schedule must be published 30 days in advance. So it, by the rules, we have to have that schedule. But of course, if someone has some concerns, they weren't quite sure, they can always call us up and we can give the information. Mm -hmm. And so the daily code practice, that's the resource that um, takes text from QST, right? Correct. Yeah. When QST is done, goes to bed, mm -hmm. production, your area, <laughs> sends us the raw text. Uh -huh. What we will do is we will take that text, we will pull out anything that we can't send in Morse code, mm -hmm. but it's whole chunks, it's whole paragraphs, mm -hmm. and we will put that into the code practice text. Mm -hmm. We do indicate the issue of QST as well as the page. Mm -hmm. As an added bonus, on our web page we will also list the QST runs for that week. Mm -hmm. In other words, if say someone this Wednesday, they happen to come across our practice and they go, well, gosh, what magazine was that from? Well, they can check on our webpage, the W1AW page, mm -hmm. and there, will, there is a link that says QST web source. Mm -hmm. And they can look and say, oh, okay, the Wednesday 9 a.m. was from this issue of QST and on this page. Yep. So they can check themselves Correct. because you yes. provide that reference. Yes. Okay, so with the daily code practice, they're getting 
sort of real world text. Yes. It's going to include letters and numbers and call signs and Correct. all kinds of stuff that if you're trying to get better at Morse code, you're going to encounter. Correct. Yes. Yeah. It is if they were in a casual conversation yeah. over the air, it's pretty much plain text. Letters, numbers, prose, signs, everything that they would need to know for Morse code. Yep. That's great. Um, so with the speeds, um, you know, part of learning Morse code is you do want to improve your receiving speed, your sending speed, um, and W1 WNAW also does something called qualifying runs. Correct. Which that's meant to help you build your speed. Uh, in many respects, yes. Yeah. The difference being is that while this is a code practice mm -hmm. where you're honing your skills for Morse code, the qualifying run, the code proficiency, is actually an award oh, that okay. is sponsored by Begali, mm -hmm. of all places. Yep. And what we're doing there is we are taking text not not from QST, but rather from other sources, science books, history books, fiction, and we are sending these at specific speeds, uh -huh. beginning at 10 words a minute up to 40 words a minute. The point of that is, since it's a proficiency, if you copy it and you copy a solid minute, you submit it to us, I'll actually look over the text and go, yes, this individual copied it or no, no, they missed two characters, but assuming they get it, we now issue you a certificate, the Qualifying Run or Code Proficiency Award. And it's more for bragging rights because we are actually checking to say, yes, this individual copied 40 words a minute or they copied 25 words a minute. In addition to that, their call sign is listed in QST yes. based upon their speed. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, more, it's, it's an award mm -hmm. and it's something that we've been offering for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's an award, which is nice, but you have to have the skills to get the award. The skill, yes, and of course so. we provide those skills yep. through our code practice here on air as well as our web files. Yeah. Um, so, and the schedule for the qualifying runs is also on the WNAW Correct. Web page, right? It's on the web page. Yeah. It's listed uh, on well in QST yep. for that issue for that month. But also, in the course of our weekly transmissions, we will list when the next qualifying run transmissions are. Mm -hmm. For example, today, even though I don't know if we want to mention the day this is being recorded, <laughs> but uh, today we have a qualifying run at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. And that'll start off at 35 words a minute and work down to 10 words a minute. Okay. So again, you know, sort of no matter where you are in your CW journey, yes. uh, you can get your skills proved out in this qualifying run mm -hmm. and, and receive a certificate yes. for having good skills. And it's actually, it's a nice certificate too. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, so then there are the, the bulletins, right? Is that Correct. Okay. And, and this here is what sends out the bulletins, right? Correct. This is the equipment we use to transmit our bulletins and code practices on nine frequencies simultaneously, oh. from 160 through 10, 6 and 2 meters. Now, the bulletins are a little different than the code practice. Mm -hmm. The code practice consists of information taken from QST. Okay. It's also sent from 5 to 35 words a minute. We use a combination of Standard and Farnsworth. Hmm. And by that I mean from speeds 15 words a minute and below, we are sending at a 15 word a minute character speed. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that is so you are training your brain to hear a character faster. Right. Yep. Well, the bulletins themselves are sent at 18 words a minute mm -hmm. with obviously an 18 word a minute character speed. Mm -hmm. Now those bulletins consist of information directly related to amateur radio specifically rules, FCC rule changes, mm -hmm. uh, anything going on within the ARL field organization, DX information, mm -hmm. propagation, radio propagation, space information in terms of space communications. Those are a little different. They're still sent via Morse code, but at 18 words a minute. Mm -hmm. And the information in there is more like current um, news? It is current news, yeah. correct, yes, because it is a bulletin. Now, the thing with W1AW, we are a code practice station, but first and foremost, we are a bulletin station. Mm -hmm. And some of the things we do are directly related to that status as being a bulletin station. 
Okay. Um, so in addition to all of these resources, um, there is also stuff that just is available on the web 24-7, right? There's Correct, yes. MP3, MP, MP3 files. Yes. Yeah, where um, people can queue those up any old time and practice their code. Correct, yes. We offer code practice files in MP3 format from 5 to 40 words a minute. Like our regular on-air code practice, that information is taken from QST. Mm -hmm. They are free for download. Uh, pretty much any current web browser plays them, so you have it configured correctly. We have archives. So in other words, if you've heard all the current stuff, and I do update it every other week, if you want to go back, say, a year and say, well, what's something you know, old I can copy, those files are available for download. We provide the MP3 as well as the text. And so what a lot of hands will do is they will play the MP3 file and have the text right next to it. Oh, great. So, uh, so with that archive available, there's a really a wealth of practice material for anybody who wants to keep at it. Correct. Yeah. And there are many other resources out there in addition yeah. to us. Uh, to, to plug the Long Island CW group, they're mm -hmm. a very active group that encourage amateur radio operators. To learn Morse code, you have CW Ops. Yep. There's, I, I think hams don't quite know just how popular Morse code still is, despite yeah. the fact that the FCC dropped the requirement back yeah. in 07. It's alive and well. And yes, it is. Yeah, I uh, get letters and emails from hams of all ages, all experience levels, all mm -hmm. license classes who, who say, you know, this is this is my next challenge. This is what I really want to learn. It's so cool. It um, is. Yeah. I believe that when the requirement was dropped, and I've heard all the arguments. Yes, yeah. There's a lot of them. We hear the arguments. Mm -hmm. It's more of a reverse psychology thing. Well, yeah. I don't have to learn it now. I want to learn it. Yeah. And of course, right now you can turn on your radio, and you may not hear a lot of CW activity, but you'll hear it during contests and operating events yeah. because it is still a very popular mode. Yeah. And despite what people may think, a lot of young individuals enjoy copying Morse code. Yep. Yeah, it's a it's a challenge. It's, it's fun. Challenge. It's like a secret language. Yes, it, it is. Yes, it's super cool. Mm -hmm. um, so it's great to learn some more about the resources that we offer right here at mm -hmm. WNAW. And uh, I totally agree. There are a lot of really wonderful resources out there. Yes. Um, from the organizations that you mentioned, there mm -hmm. are some great uh, web-based tools. There are a few apps. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the July August issue of On the Air um, points to a lot of the resources so uh, you can read this online at arl.org slash OTA to get all the resources that we talk about in here um, we also go over all the resources Joe and I just talked about in this issue mm -hmm. and of course they can listen to us on the air and you can listen to WNAW yeah. on the air old receiver SDR new one doesn't matter we are here we're providing the Morse code practice on a daily basis Monday through Friday and uh, I am very happy to report that it's still popular. Yeah, terrific. So, it's awesome. Well, thank you so much for You're talking to us today, Joe. You're welcome, and thank you for the opportunity. Sure. So thanks for being with us today. The On the Air podcast will be back in September, 73. 73.